Now to the NHL, former Chicago Blackhawks player Kyle Beach came forward as John Doe, revealing his identity after accusing the team's former video coach of sexually assaulting him in 2010. Beach filed a lawsuit against the Blackhawks organization for mishandling the allegations earlier this year, and now he's opening up about the devastating incident. The Chicago Blackhawks triumphantly hoisted the Stanley Cup in 2010, but one member of that year's team had buried a secret he feared could destroy his career. Kyle Beach, the 11th pick in the 2008 draft, says the team's video coach Brad Aldrich sexually assaulted and harassed him at a hotel during the run-up to the championship. Until very recently, I did not talk about it. I did not discuss it. I didn't think about it. Beach speaking out for the first time after a report commissioned by the Blackhawks and law firm Jenner and Block concluded that Blackhawks coaching and management ignored Beach's complaints. The team ordered to pay a $2 million fine by the NHL. I cried. I smiled. I laughed. I cried some more. Just a, a great feeling of relief, vindication, and it was no longer my word against everybody else's. According to the lawsuit, the incident took place when Beach was 20 years old and in the minor league. He was called up to the pros for the playoffs. Beach claims he reported the sexual assault to several individuals within the organization, but nothing was done. The Blackhawks denied it. They said my claims were meritless. To me, I took that as them telling, saying to the world that I was a liar. To be honest, I... So I was scared, mostly. I was fearful. I had had my career threatened. I felt alone and dark. Um, sorry, I'm, it's tough to recall these moments. Um, I think mostly I, I felt like I was alone and there was nothing I could do and nobody I could turn to for help. Following the investigation's findings, the Blackhawks general manager promptly resigned. The organization releasing this statement overnight, the Blackhawks have implemented numerous changes and improvements within the organization, including hiring a new leadership team that is committed to winning championships while adhering to the highest ethical, professional and athletic standards. Joining us now is Susan Loggins, the attorney who has been representing Beach since he filed his lawsuit in May of 2021. Thank you so much for being with us, Susan. An investigation by the law firm Jenner and Block, commissioned by the Blackhawks, included the quote, quote, nothing was done when Kyle told the organization's coaches and management about this alleged abuse. Kyle reiterated yesterday that the team's general manager at the time, Stan Bowman, and then head coach Joel Quinville, along with other senior leaders, were aware that former video coach Brad Aldrich sexually assaulted and harassed him. Kyle also added that the Blackhawks, quote, denied his accusation and called his claims meritless. Susan, how can something like this happen? It happens because people put money in their pocketbook ahead of human life. And Danny Wirtz said that during his uh, presentation when the report came out. He said, we let the betterment of the team and their success in the Stanley Cup take precedence over Kyle Beach, and for that, we owe him an apology. But the thing to keep in mind is that Kyle Beach has been living this for, with this for 10 years, and the Blackhawks have really never done anything about it, and the reality is they still aren't. It's one thing for somebody to come forward and say, oh, it's my fault or we shouldn't have done it, but they're still fighting his case, trying to get it dismissed, saying that it's not possible that he hid the memory of it while their own people are saying they don't remember it. Quinville claims he didn't remember any of these conversations. So it's okay for him to not remember, but they still don't believe Kyle Beach. So the point is until we have a culture of openness and we stop having a culture where we treat athlete, athletes like raw meat, this is not gonna stop. We're still going to have victims who aren't believed. So, Susan, did the organization look at winning as a priority over the safety of their players? Absolutely. And they've admitted that. They said, the, in, right in the report, it states that they contemplated what, should, what to do. And the management decided that 
team chemistry would be bothered during the Stanley Cup playoff, so nothing should be done. That's one thing. They made Kyle victim, Kyle Beach the victim of sexual assault, ride on planes, ride in transportation, have meals with the person that had just assailed him. But after that, instead of removing him from the scene and investigating him like they were required to do, they gave him the choice to resign and did no investigation whatsoever, and instead treated him like a hometown hero. They literally gave him the cup to take home to Houghton, Michigan, where the boy was assaulted by him because of this. But the point is, even though this morning the Blackhawks are still apologizing, they're still trying to dismiss the case. So we've got to stop saying, oh, okay, you said you're sorry, it's over. It's not over. We have to stop the culture of putting these athletes' life on the line and treating them like they're valueless so that a corporation can be worth a billion dollars. The Blackhawks did release a statement saying they have, quote, implemented numerous changes and improvements within the organization, including hiring a new leadership team. Susan, what do you think of the team's response to these allegations since the lawsuit was filed? I think it's totally impersonal. We haven't heard one person. We haven't heard Stan Bowman. We haven't he heard Quenville. We haven't heard McIsaac. We haven't heard one person personally apologize for their role in things. We've heard statements like, we don't want the team to be distracted by what's going on. The whole thing is a question of minimizing what happened at Kyle Beach because they don't want to pay for it. It still boils down to the pocketbook. When are people going to step up to the plate and say, look, I'm hoping to have a fair resolution, but in the meantime, we're at fault, we're sorry, this destroyed you, and we are personally sorry for what happened. Again, all they're trying to do is dismiss this case. They just want to get out of this with as little as they can. They still don't want to take responsibility. We did hear from the Blackhawks CEO, Danny Wirtz. He said in a statement that he instructed the organization's lawyers to reach a, quote, fair resolution, saying he wants to, quote, engage in good faith efforts to fairly resolve these matters, to rectify the harm John Doe's have suffered to the extent possible. Susan, Danny, we understand, has also noted that he reached out to you and scheduled a call for next week to discuss the settlement. Do you agree with Wirtz, and do you believe that he's acting in good faith? So I never heard from Mr. Wirtz. I heard from the exact same lawyer that I contacted before we ever filed suit and said, told him what happened, asked them to investigate, and gave them an opportunity to discuss this before litigation. And they said, no, it didn't happen. That's the same group of people that want to discuss a fair settlement. I'll believe it when I see it. I hope it happens. Every case should be settled. It's good for the world, but I doubt it. And multiple Blackhawk players say they had no knowledge of the assault at the time, Susan. Star, Jonathan Toes saying in a press conference that his, quote, heart goes out to Kyle for what he dealt with and wishes the team could have, quote, done something differently, myself included. Now, how likely is it that the other players weren't aware of the incident and what should they have done if they were aware? You know, I think every player on the organization was afraid of Brad Aldridge because he peddled his connection to management with all the players, especially the young ones. He told them that he had the inside track. He told them that he could ruin their career if he didn't get along with them. He told them he had that kind of power. And Aldridge's father worked for another NHL team. So there was every reason for them to believe that he did have power. I'm sure that some of the players didn't know what was happening. But just today, I got a call asking for Kyle Beach's cell phone number from a 2010 player who wanted to call and talk to him. There is a sense of fairness that's creeping up in this case. And I'm anxious to see what happens if these players put their foot down and tell the Blackhawks management, we're not going to allow for one of our own to be treated like this. We need to stand up for one another. Now, the Blackhawks head coach back in 2010 is now with the Florida Panthers, and we understand that he's actually meeting with the NHL commissioner to discuss the incident. How would you like the coach to be held accountable, and what do you think this could mean for his future in the NHL? So I would like for him to treat Kyle Beach the way he's expecting to be treated. Kyle's a very forgiving person. He's one of the nicest people I've ever met. 
And so Quenville claims that he doesn't remember all these things that it's been reported and the report occurred while he was there by numerous people. But yet, as I mentioned, they're claiming that Kyle should remember everything that happened to him. And it's not fair that he repressed his memory because it was so horrific. So I would like Kyle to be treated as equally as the way they want to be treated. And then I'd like to hear Quinville come out and say, for whatever role he played in it, he's sorry that it should have been handled differently. I'd like to see what should have happened to be stated by him. Well, it is good to see that Kyle Beach is receiving some support from the rest of the sports world. Susan Loggins, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.